Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. It is Taskmaster Tuesday, and that means I'm taking on various other content creators to see who can rack up the highest score. This time around is going to be a little different, because it's the first ever team task. And that means that we have divided it into teams. We've got History Guy Gaming and Spartan, Every Day is Different and Brother Monroe, and of course, uh, the Serious Strategy Gamer and myself. Now, this also means that we have been assigned various countries that we can use. We have uh, History Guy Gaming and Spartan, hailing from the US, and as such, being able to use the US fleet. The United Kingdom, represented by Every Day is Different and Brother Monroe. And um, although Serious Strategy Gamer, I believe, is also British, at least judging by his accent, uh, him and me are going to take on the European factions, or at least we can be any of the European factions, which means France, Germany, Spain, Italy, or Austria, Hungary. Now, the enemy is going to be Japan. They're going to have one of everything. They're going to have a battleship, a battle cruiser, heavy cruiser, light cruiser, and destroyer. Destroyers worth one point, light cruiser two, heavy cruiser three, battle cruiser four, and battleship five. But. There is a bit of a catch, as there always is with Taskmaster Tuesday. The way that this is going to work is that one team member gets to build the battleship, and in my team that's going to be Serious Strategy Gamer, and the other one, i.e. me, is going to be building the battle cruiser. The combined kill score for each team slash country wins. So 30 points is the maximum. Combined time to kill all enemies will act as a tiebreaker. The challenge was devised by Brother Monroe this week. So, time to build a battle cruiser that can take on the entirety of this fleet. The year is 1916, which means that it's not going to be uh, terribly accurate, at least not at range. Which means, if you want to hit something, you are probably going to have to get fairly close to the enemy. Now, I'm not exactly sure what fairly close means in this particular account. Um, it could be that that means 10 kilometer range. Um, maybe you get lucky and you hit something from farther away. I don't really know what the accuracy ranges are for 1916, as I usually fight either really early or really late. Now, considering I'm fighting destroyers, I want hydro... Uh, torpedoes are not going to be that likely to be used. Two powder propellants, heavy shells. Uh, I'd rather not have any flash fire, so I'm going to go with advanced hydraulic turrets, enhanced loaders, uh, turtleback citadel, anti-flooding to reinforce bulkheads to anti-torpedo protection. If I can help it, I don't want to get torped at all, but as it stands, I have a turning circle of 1400 meters. So, I would like to very, very much reduce that. It's, well, it is <laughs> it is only a kilometer at this point. Um, if I remove these things to make room for some additional guns... Yeah, we're right back up at 1336. That is, however, at a speed of 33 knots. If I reduce that speed to 25 knots, the turning circle drops to a little under 1000 meters. Let's say I want to do about 33 knots, and of course it'll also have an impact on what sort, and particularly what size of guns I can field. I'm going to go with the 13-inch guns. These things have Mark III stats, as opposed to the 14 inches Mark II, which means that they get quite a bit of a buff, reload-wise, um, and thus rate of fire. They are actually longer ranged than the 14-inch guns, and they have a significantly higher muzzle velocity at 694 versus 641. The other ones, let's see, can we get Mark IVs? No, Mark IVs have not yet been invented. So it's going to be Mark III 13 inch. Um, I have about 6,000 tons left, at least in the current configuration. I would like to go with four turrets to provide a lot of firepower. Let's see, can I use a standard tall superimposed barbette, centerline 13, 3, triple, ta-da. Uh, she is slightly overweight. Stuff that you can say about your ship, but not about your woman. Uh, not that mine is, by the way. Anyway, we have a bit, bit of an issue. Um, displacement's too high. For weight offset is about 12%. So that weight offset is problematic. 
Let's reduce speed. Mm. I think it's the anti-tour protection that's currently making my life quite difficult. Yeah, there's about 1200 tons in there. I still have to probably change my boilers a bit. 48, no thank you. Induced, 91, better. Um, however, it still means that even at 29 knots, I still don't have a lot of displacement left. So I'm probably going to have to sacrifice one of my turrets. And it's going to have to be one of the bow turrets. I don't like that. Because it means that I have most of my firepower concentrated on the stern. No, 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 no. I don't want that. How can I fix this? How can I fix this? No, that's a bit large. Oh, these are cheaper, by the way, the standards. Weight, dis weight distribution-wise. Still 13%. If we ramp that thing all the way back, we're at 9.2. Remove that turret, 6.9. This thing scales back very, very, very quickly. Okay. That gives me about 2,000 tons for armor and secondary. Secondaries are going to be important. I have light cruisers and destroyers to deal with. And I'm thinking 5-inch guns, Mark III... I think Mark III is the best that you can get. They're only 123 tons. Now, there was somebody who commented a while ago saying, why do you never take the two uh, or the, the double barrels? Because they get more accuracy. Uh, yes, they do. But is that worth it when you look at the stats? Let's say a 1,000 meter range. I put out two shells every 14.7 seconds. I put out 14 rounds a minute. That means that out of those four, I would have an accuracy of 40%, and that is at the minimum range. So let's say that I hit, well, 1.8. You know what? Let's just draw up the calculator and check. Because there is something to be said for volume of fire. So this is going to be uh, 0.39er times 4.09. That would mean that with this dual gun, I would hit 1.5951 shells. 1.5951. If I pick the triples... Um, hold on. Yeah. If I pick the triples, it's going to be 0.32. So 0.32 accuracy times 3.24 is 1.03. Huh. So in this case, they might be more useful. But... Is this per gun? Or per barrel? That's the real question. Hmm. This is probably going to yield further investigation, which is not part of this, well, this particular video. Anyway, um, do we have the tall small barbettes? Ah, oh, we do, but it's a terrible spot for them. Casemates are another option. This is 46 tons for one gun. This is a hundred and no, this is 60 tons for one gun. So this is effectively better. There we go. Firing arcs are decent. Rate of fire is okay-ish. I'm going to augment these with um, a secondary turret. 5 inch triple here. And then funnel wise, we're good. I could put another secondary gun on the stern. Let's put an 8-inch on there to achieve more firepower against the cruiser and the... Well, most notably the light cruiser and the heavy cruiser. Of course, they can also do a really amount, a really nice amount of damage against the DD, but it really depends on whether you hit stuff, as it always does. 
0.4. No, well, I guess that's about it. Um, I'm playing a freaking fragile battle cruiser, and there's not that much that I can change about that. Considering I want to stay at range, I think belt armor is more important than deck. So let's up the amount of belt armor. Eight inches of belt. It's probably not going to really impress anybody here. Nine inch. Conning tower. We get there, 8.6. Exactly the tonnage. 30,000 of 30,000. She's not particularly well defended. That could be a real issue here. 8.3 inch on the turrets. And that's 8.3 inches times 2, plus 100%. So that's 18, sorry, 16.6. These guns can penetrate that <laughs> at all ranges. <laughs> right. Okay, well, here she goes. The Prince Eitel Friedrich. Okay, let's see. The enemy was starting 20 clicks out. They are to the north, so that's where we're going to go. At our turning circle of 1100 meters. At least I have some warning of incoming torpedoes with Hydro 2. I would really like to spot them early. So that I can open fire with those 13s. And also, because the time is important, as it will dictate whether, uh, or let's say if, we manage to sink all the ships. And other parties do so too, other teams. It is going to be the tiebreaker. Still to the north. Where are you? I think we're going to spot them at a six, seven, eight kilometer range out. Hello. Twelve. Okay. What are you? You're the battleship. Good find. That's not how that... <laughs> I don't think that this is particularly what this turret was meant to, to take. <laughs> it's amusing though. Uh, a fairly high amount of firepower here, four triple 14-inch guns, which means that they can pen me, but I don't think they spotted me. So we're going to slow down and turn to starboard and see if we can do some damage against them before they detect me. Accuracy, as expected, leaves a lot to be desired. Oh, they have returned fire. All right, time to go broadside. Bring all the guns to bear. It's not ideal in this game, but in this case, I'm going to have to roll with it. Because that's the only way to get all of my 13-inch guns to fire. Even though the gun on the stern is out so far that it does have a pretty decent firing angle. This is going to be pretty close. Eight clicks. And we're still only looking at an accuracy of 3.5%. Yikes, look at that incoming fire. Oh, I have a lot of bulkheads. I have anti-flooding. I have a decent citadel. But if those 14-inch shells start to punch holes in the Prince Eitel Friedrich, we're going to have some serious problems. Give me the secondaries on whatever that is. I think it's their battle cruiser. Now I'm targeting the battleship first. Two reasons. One, she's the most uh, valuable ship. And two, as far as I think, she's the most dangerous target. She has to get neutralized. The battle cruiser comes also with 12 14 inch guns. Lovely. The enemy has inflicted the first damage. And my accuracy is still pretty shit at less than 5%. Come on. There we go. Destroyed a casemate. Not bad, but the amount of damage seems very much negated by a bunch of armor. 
I'm trying to angle away while still making all of my guns work. Accuracy's down to 4%. I think that with this team task, it's going to be the battle cruisers that will be the tiebreaker. In the sense, not that we're all going to get the same points, but I think it's easier to survive this encounter with a battleship. Because the player using the battleship, and my team, Serious Strategy Gamer, is going to get a more protected, generally more well-rounded ship. What are we looking at? The Otaki-san. Minimum bulkheads. We need to flood this thing. Chance to pen? 70%. Anti-flood? 3. Heavy shells? Reduced ammo? That's interesting. How much belt armor do you have? 9.2 inches plus 100%, so that's 18.4. Um, I can pen that from 15,000 meter range and less. So at 10,000 meter range, I can easily punch through that, provided that I can hit him. And that last bit, mm, not looking that good. Maintain pressure on the battleship. <clears throat> and just hope that those 14-inch guns don't strike me and, well, pop off a turret, as they sometimes do. At least most of my guns can fire. Look at all those casemates. They're all eager for battle, but they're just slightly out of range, unfortunately. Two and a half percent chance to hit. Come on. Ideally, hit him once or twice. Flood him, slow him down, and then keep hitting him. Oh shit, what are you? Smoke screen, so... Ooh. <laughs> That's a destroyer, all right. And I think it just might have launched her torp. So we're going to turn hard away from that target. Yeah, that was a 13-inch shell that hit the bow deck and penetrated for 590 damage. Come on. There we go. 834. That sinks the destroyer. I'm not seeing torpedoes in the water, but I don't have identification on the ship either, so she might have... There they are. There they are. She might have launched them, and indeed she did. Oh, the Otakasan is once again blind. Not sure if it's going to be of much use to me, because at this range I couldn't hit her even if I wanted to. But it might give me an opportunity to get a couple of deck pens. Although at a mere 63, it would have to be a bow or a stern pen. Because the rest of the ship is too heavily protected. What's your speed? 29 and a half? Jesus, you're quick. That's a problem because it means that the ship is faster than I am. And thereby, if it runs away, it's going to take me a lot of time to catch back up. 50% chance to pen. Switch to high explosive. Now, I could wait for the Otakasan to start running out of ammunition, but that means that I'm going to set a terrible time and I don't want to screw over Strategy Guy Game, or sorry, um, Serious Strategy Gamer. So, I'm just going to have to take a bit of a risk here by going quite close to the Otakasan at eight, maybe seven clicks, and deal some damage against her. Now the chance to pen is good enough. Ricochet chance is low enough that I feel like I can take some risks. Although. That's not part of the plan. Those two hits. 70% chance to pen. Ricochet chance really low. The flooding is under control and the fire is out. So while those hits looked bad, they're not as bad as I had expected them to be. Oh, these guns. The Takasan's on fire. Not sure why, 
actually. Oh, maybe it was the 8-inch gun with a parcel pen. Let's switch fire to the Kirishima. Because she might be easier to sink, especially with minimum bulkheads as well. 86% chance to pen her. Shells are going all over the place, aren't they? Yeah. Not great. Otaki-san still has 650 shells. So running out of ammunition is not likely. And I'm presenting a flat broadside. Ooh. That could have easily hit me. Please. No joy. If I do a full starboard turn and get out of range of the Otaka-san, or at least a range where she's going to be accurate, I might be able to take out some of the other targets, thereby scoring some points and reducing some threats. But it would also mean that the Otaka-san potentially will run away. And when she does, I won't be able to catch her, because I can only do 26 knots after taking some battle damage. So really, the only chance that I have is to push in. Push into a battleship that has that many 14-inch guns and the battle cruiser that's assisting her. I don't like it. One and a half percent chance to hit, and they are still loading. Have they stopped? They stopped. Steady as she goes. Chance to pen. 60-ish percent, but dropping. Returning in or out? In. That's important, because it means that, yep, there we go again. They're going to close the range, and I don't like that. Ricochet chance is too high, but high explosive is never going to pen that thing. It's never going to be enough to ensure that I get floodings on her. Crap. The other way around. Do oh, no. Well, that's problematic. This is going to be potentially the end of the ship. Flooding looks really bad. Three damaged engines, a damaged rudder. The fire has been put out. Thank God. But I can barely turn, which means that the only gun that's capable of both firing and maybe hitting the target is the 8-inch gun on the stern. I'm, go <laughs> I'm going to reduce speed to one knot. <laughs> oh, man. Not so good. There we go. The 13-inch guns are back in the fight. Ricochet chance is once again really high. I don't want ricochets. Can we please use some of that magical anti-water system? Anti-flood? Because when the AI gets it... Like, if the AI gets flooded like this, they're probably going to go right back up to 60-65% buoyancy. I have maximum bulkheads. I have anti-flood 2. Sure, it's not the best, but it could have been worse. And no water is being drained whatsoever. Nothing. Great, destroy another casemate. All right, switch back to auto. So we're going to switch back to a high. Exp oh, sorry, to armor piercing. This was not part of the plan, but this tends to happen to battle cruisers a lot. Even though I don't think that I had that many issues with increased ammo, uh, heavy shells doesn't help. But I had some fairly serious barbette armor. I think you can get barbette three. I have barbette two. Because I was trying to avoid flash fires. But apparently the game didn't get that memo. 
And I don't really see too much else that could cause a flash fire. I think I got really, really screwed there with one of those shells. But at this rate, I'm not going to be going anywhere. Because the engines are not getting fixed. Which means I'll be pretty much dead in the water. And as such, either the Otaku-san is going to close in and kill me off, or she's going to run out of range and make sure that I can't hit her at all. If I can even see her at that point. Come here. Turn towards me, trying to finish the job. Because you can do better than that. Oh, great. Here comes the turn. Ricochet chance average. It's a 55 degree ricochet. At least the ship is fairly maneuverable now. <sighs> Serious strategy gamer, I'm sorry to let you down, buddy. But it looks like this is not going to be my fight. What I'm going to try and do now is just go bow in. Keep moving around at my full speed of one knot. And hope that their ricochet chance on me is really high. But, well, it isn't really, is it? Because their chance to pen is still 70%. Come on, I'm going to have to risk it. It's pretty much the only play I have. I need to flood these things out. Chance to pen, 70. Chance to pen, 83. But, faster, more maneuverable target. Oh, no, 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 no. Accuracy is very much impacted by the battle damage. No, actually it's not. It's only 4%. Considering I have 10% structural integrity left, that's providing a really stable platform. The target fast maneuver is the biggest debuff to my accuracy. So, the attack is too fast? You kidding? What about the battle cruiser? Minus 35.8. So hitting that one is just as difficult. Oh, there's the light cruiser. Anyway, so far I have scored exactly one point for my team by sinking the uh, destroyer early on. But that's about it. She still has 513 shells left. She still has 1,338. Holy shit. Electrical turrets. Increased ammo shells. Oh, but Barbette 4. I thought this thing is an accident waiting to happen. But maybe not. Maybe she's decent enough protected against flash fires. To be fair, I'm surprised I'm still here. I thought they would have killed me by now. Ah, there we go. Fire and flooding. One compartment on the Kirishima is getting flooded. Minimum bulkheads are making sure that that is going to cause quite a few issues. It's another compartment. 60. Structural integrity down to 9%. Kirishima should now be easier to hit as she's slower. She's down to 37%. Okay. Come on. Oh. Watch this number. Because that is going to start changing rapidly. As they probably have some magical anti-flooding uh, dwarves down below decks. 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 7, 8, 9, 10. Where is my anti-flooding? Uh, they might have had better anti-flooding than I did. They might have had an auxiliary engine to help with the pumps. 
but come on. That was some magical refloating capability right there. And I'm getting none of that action. No such thing for the Prince Eitel Friedrich. I'm burning. My structural integrity is down to 4%. <laughs> Maybe I can get lucky with the heavy cruiser. Because it shouldn't be too hard to pen that thing. But the issue is, can I even hit it in the first place? 2.5%. Yeah, not really. Not really. Buoyancy, still 24. Structural integrity, 2%. Interestingly, though, I have done 2,600 damage, and they've done 2,500. But that's probably the few highly devastating hits that I threw up against the destroyer. Because the rest of the ships are really not that impressed. Because I simply can't hit them. Here, Furutaka, range 9 kilometers. Not a worry in the world. You know what? I think the Japanese at this point are just going to let me starve here. Because I can't... <laughs> Hello? <laughs> There's nobody around here. <laughs> they just... Oh, hello. They just left the Prince Eitel Friedrich for dead. And... Uh, <laughs> ran away. <laughs> Eleven and a half. Come on. Are you suddenly coming back or something? Yeah. They, th <laughs> they think I'm over there. <laughs> yeah, right. Your heavy cruiser could have informed you different. Ah, there we go. Takasana spotted me. Go on then. Finish the job. Finish what you started. Although I'm not even sure if it was their shell that did all that damage with the, the flash fire. The thing has been hit nine times out of the 847 attempts. But, good lord. Oh, there we go. We got flooding on him. Ah, there's the battle cruiser. Holy shit! Are you kidding? You are within an inch of your life. 30% buoyancy. Boom. All water, pumped out, everything fixed. What the hell? Anti-flood 3, Orcs 3. That's enough, supposedly. To completely fix the ship. That is nuts. That is nuts. Not even modern warships could come back from that. Not that fast. 0.7% structural. <laughs> I mean, we had... Well, we've had several collisions with other ships lately. Um, was it 2019? When it was the... Um, was it the Helge Ingstad, I think? The Norwegian frigate? That rammed something and ran ashore. And that sunk in a matter of hours. Despite the best efforts of the crew, I think. But this guy, Kirishima, flooded 70% of the ship, closes the bulkheads and goes, Nah, we got this. Not a problem. Fix that flooding and get back out there. And watch this battleship do the same thing in real time. 73, 74, 75. This is nuts. Ox 3, anti flood 3. 80%. <laughs> this is something that might need to get addressed. Because this is nuts. 90%. And see, if you have a lot of bulkheads, I get it. Because you can subdivide the ship into several compartments. And say, okay, compartment, I don't know, J18 has been flooded. Uh, we're going to pump that one dry. And now we're going to move on to J19, and then J20, whatever. But 
This thing has minimum bulkheads. And it's perfectly dry again. Whereas I get flooded, I have maximum bulkheads, I have anti-flood too, nothing happens. Just meh. Buoyancy. No joy. This is weird. <laughs> They're taking their sweet time killing me too, by the way. Oh, there she goes. I was at 0.1% structural. Pfft. Right. Well, that was a Taskmaster attempt where I contributed a whole one point to my team. After getting flash fired and uh, apparently not bringing any kind of pumps aboard to fix any flooding that I might have had. Hope you guys did better, the other content creators that is. Uh, links down to all of their videos below. Again, the teams, I am teamed up with Serious Strategy Gamer. Every day is different, and Brother Monroe I represent in the UK, and the US is History Guy Gaming and Spartan. So, links to them down below. Let's see if they did any better. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you soon for another one.